KSEC 100 students, we're back. We are back. And let me just say, the last 15-minute segment took approximately two hours filming to uh, uploading to closed captioning and finally to put it on Canvas. Whew. It's a lot of work doing these videos. I thought it would be a lot easier than this, but nothing in life is that easy. So you got to really want it. And I want this to happen. Hope you do too. Okay, let's continue with chapter 10. Chapter 10 talks about eating and a variety of other things, motivation and emotion. And are we conditioned to eat? Oh, look, it's 12 o'clock. I must be hungry. It's lunchtime. Really? Or is it just we just think of lunchtime as being around 12 o'clock? Do we really listen to our bodies? I have to say one thing my son, Joaquin, he's able to do quite well which none of us in the family are able to do, is when he's done eating, he actually stops eating. When he's full, he listens to his body, he actually stops eating. Me, it's like, oh, there's just a little bit of chips left in the bag. Let me finish it. It's not always the best way to do things in life. Uh, we grew up eating certain foods. We're used to certain foods, certain th things that we're used to growing up with. That's what we enjoy if we have a taste for it. For example, this has come up before, the, the soup of menudo. How many of you like menudo and how many of you don't? Well, I bet you the class is divided right in half. These are things that we grow up with. I got a question for you. How many of you have eaten bugs? Well, of course you have. If you've ever ridden a bike, you've eaten bugs, especially here's Pedroza's tip for the day, never ride a bike with your mouth open, right? And if you've ever slept, which all of you have, right, unless you're zombies, um, you've eaten plenty of bugs. Some of us have sampled tasty morsels of insects. And, you know, what's gross to one community actually could be scrumptious to another community. And so uh, bugs beware. As we start running out of food around the house, and the stores are all closed, we're going to be eyeballing you, so you better move out soon. I mentioned last time about being that chubby kid um, and eventually leading to my diagnosis uh, and my label of uh, diabetes and my label of being a sugar daddy. Uh, the epidemic we have in the United States right now is obesity. And obesity is a uh, pretty intense problem. One of the situations with obesity is this notion um, that we are 25% or more over ideal weight. Now, when we look at those charts, we have to just take them as a guide, right? Uh, but it is a prominent problem that can lead to all kinds of other issues, high blood pressure, diabetes, et cetera, premature death. Now, our notion of what the perfect human being should look like can vary from culture to culture, as you can see in these two images here. Um, in the past, our version of a beautiful person was more likely this image. If you look at early paintings from the Renaissance period, you're going to see women portrayed in this form and fashion, right? Because that meant they were healthy, had plenty of food, so it means they were wealthy. If we saw paintings of these types of individuals, those folks would probably be poor, malnutritioned, and diseased. Now, we lean more towards this way. This is the way that we're supposed to look. And of course, what that has done is promoted eating disorders in various professions, like the modeling profession. And we emulate this over and over again. We get those um, catalogs. We get those images constantly bombarding us. And just to talk about these subjects makes me nervous. Anorexia nervosa means I have an, a control issue and my body is disordered when I look into the mirror because I see this big, big, huge blob when everybody else sees a human skeleton like Mr. Bones. Please don't mention that to him. He's very sensitive about his weight. So 
Um, what's going on here? Well, this notion, I guess, as I mentioned with control with anorexia, I'm not going to be eating anything. With bulimia, I'm going to, especially in high stress conditions, I'm going to be eating that gallon of ice cream, the giant bag of chips, and the two liter bottle of soda, as you say, I say pop. And um, I'm going to feel horrible about it afterwards because I'm sure you probably wanted some too. So what I'm going to ultimately do is to try to exercise it out, maybe take some chemicals so it'll come out of my body, um, like laxatives, or I might purge it out. I might stick my hands. You'll probably notice a lot of scarring from constantly sticking it down my throat, and I'm going to purge it out. Some people think that bulimia and anorexia are the same illness. They're all both dealing with the issue of control. They're not putting anything in my body as little as possible. They're printing huge quantities and getting rid of it. They mostly affect women, unfortunately, because society has a lot more demands on women than they do on men. Well, let's get to the other topic, emotion, which is tied to what we were just talking about, motivation and eating disorders, right? With emotion, it's a very simple definition, as you can see, but yet it's a complex phenomena. For example, have you ever had so many emotions you couldn't even explain to somebody how you're feeling? They said, how are you, how are you feeling? He's like, I can't even tell you. I have so much emotion. Or how about this? If, is it possible to love and hate the same person at the same time? You've seen this in telenovelas or soap operas. Somebody strangling somebody and saying, I love you, I love you, as they're strangling the person. Come on. How is that possible? Love and hate. But if you've ever experienced it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The process of emotion really is, is rather complicated. It's broken down very simply. It's a physiological process. It's a cognitive process. So there's some physical responses that might facial expressions, maybe our cheeks might get red, depending on the emotion and so forth. We're thinking, we're processing what, what we're feeling at the time, but also the expression. And we mostly go on the expression, right? What we see is what we judge. And it's very possible to get it wrong. Now, you guys have probably heard of Forrest Gump, right? Life is like a box of chocolates because you never know what you're going to get. I have a different expression. I don't know if you ever heard this. I started it some years ago. My expressions don't usually catch on. But my expression is emotions are like a box of crayons. Now, why do I say that? Because when you got that first box of crayons, you had all the basic colors, right? But then you graduated to the bigger box and the bigger box. And you knew you hit the big time when you had the sharpener built into your box of crayons. And they had, they had names in there you never even heard of. Turquoise, magenta, battleship gray, churro. Well, I just made up that last one, but who knows? They might have come up with that one. So emotions are rather complex. We have primary emotions. Those are the basic things that you first experience as an infant. And then secondary emotions that as you got a little bit older, you started getting a little bit more into that bigger box of crayons. Right? So instead of just prying as a baby, as you got older, around two and a half, three, you started understanding this notion of guilt and shame and pride and doubt. That's when we get into that area where kids don't understand emotions early on, but then it gets complicated and you ask them how they're feeling, they can't answer you, right? So I want to tell you about my case study and it deals with sex. So if there's kids around, I don't know if you want them to hear about this information, but um, scientifically, Masters and Johnson explored what they called the sexual response cycle. And what they were looking at was they were looking at the whole sexual experience between a couple. And they actually examined them and filmed them and collected data. And they broke down the sexual response cycle accordingly, right? 
And what they found was that typically males have a difficult time in um, restarting the sexual response cycle once they've completed the sexual response cycle. So that leads me to my case study. And the name of the case study is called Johnny the Refractory Man. And of course, the refractory period refers to that time that typically males must wait before they are able to re-engage in the sexual response cycle. I met Johnny when I was working at La Casa. I'm sorry, Frasera. When I was working at an agency called Cristo Rey. Cristo Rey. Let me write that down for you in case you've never heard it. Cristo Rey is an interesting agency because you would automatically assume that the agency was a religious place, there it is, Cristo Rey, and the name translates to Christ the King, but actually it was a one-stop shopping for human services. They had a food bank, they had a clothing bank, they had employment services, they had language classes. I was in charge of counseling services. So I met Johnny, a 40-something-year-old Mexican-American male, and he was court-ordered to come see me. And when he saw me, uh, he, what had happened was he was breaking and entering into a church while he was intoxicated at the time with alcohol. So rather than sending him to jail, the judge sent him for counseling. So we started working on his issues, and he brought up an interesting question to me. He told me to, if I could be so kind to define the word love to him because he never felt like he ever was loved or ever experienced love. Now, when he asked me that question, I thought he was kidding because you know everybody knows what love is, but let's be honest, if you've never felt like you've experienced love, then how can you possibly know what love is, right? Uh, I was a little perplexed. I could get a dictionary and show him. I could say, watch this clip of a movie that I thought expresses love the best. I could say, oh, these lyrics of the song is really good. Um, but I don't think that would cover it, right? This notion of not knowing what love is, not feeling what love is. It's like telling a blind person what the color orange looks like. if They've never seen orange. You just say, well, it looks just like an orange, but that doesn't really help them, does it? So it's a complex case indeed with Johnny the Refractory Man. Now, why do I call him Johnny the Refractory Man? Well, when he came to therapy, he brought up immediately that he was unable to engage in the sexual response cycle. And I asked him, well, how long has it been? And he said it, was, it had been 10 years. And uh, his last occasion uh, was 10 years previous when he was with his girlfriend and he was out with his friends drinking heavily. He came home, and of course, we know that alcohol is a depressant, so it depressed his central nervous system, and he wasn't able to engage in anything, and she got very angry and called him all kinds of horrible names, and that stuck with him. So every subsequent attempt failed, so psychologically it interfered with his sexual response cycle. So that's the case of Johnny the Refractory Man. Time for some reviews. First question I'm going to ask you from this chapter, and there's three questions from this chapter, so I'm glad you watched both videos, is to talk about the case study of Sugar Daddy. That would be me. What was the diagnosis and what were some of the symptoms I reveal? The second question is to compare and contrast uh, internal and external motivation, and please give some examples. And the final question is, of course, as you expected, Johnny the Refractory Man right? Tell me about that case study and um, what role emotion played in that case study. These are questions I'm sure you're all going to answer. I started getting some responses from exam two. and I know you're going to do great on exam two and even better on exam three. Hopefully it'll be in person, but if it is online, you're going to do even better because this is a new process for all of us, and I think you're going to be in even more detail. Thank you for watching. Looking forward to seeing you again for chapter 11. Take care now.